Now you are probably wondering why anyone would paint a hundred miniature faces. What purpose would that serve? Well, let me explain. I actually painted a hundred miniature faces and this is the story of why I think you should actually do the same thing. You see, general painting itself is hard, but miniature painting, well, we've not really invented a difficulty level for that yet. Not only am I painting something 28 times smaller than me, but I've also got to use a tiny little brush to paint it. You see, anybody who starts miniature painting inevitably arrives at the same problem. You go to Games Workshop, maybe you buy something from Lord of the Rings, Age of Sigma, or Warhammer 40,000, and most of the guys have helmets on, so they're pretty easy to paint, right? But then there's this one character you brought, and he doesn't have a helmet. And this is the coolest model you have in your collection, the character model, and you can't paint his face. Maybe you've never painted a face in your life. So naturally you come to YouTube and you search for ESO Tabletop. Just kidding, you would of course go and search for Duncan Rhodes. And thank goodness he has a tutorial on how to paint faces. Wait, how to paint faces in three different ways? How can one man be so naturally helpful? I'm going to take my face painting skills to the next level and I'm confident I can easily follow this tutorial. But then I hit my first problem. So I'm following this painting tutorial and I immediately get stuck as soon as the guide requires me to have some kind of skill, some kind of accuracy with a paintbrush. Now I understand that we obviously don't all come out the womb with our first painted space marine like Duncan Rhodes. Let me explain because I feel like this is actually a big issue in the miniature painting hobby community. Up until this point I had either avoided painting faces entirely done a pretty tragic job. It was always the weakest part of the miniature for me. And this may seem obvious to some of you, but painting faces can really be compared to any skill that you're learning in life. You start off really bad and then you carry on practicing and you get better. But what you don't do is watch a tutorial like this and just expect that you're suddenly going to have the same skill and hand-eye coordination that the video creator has. That obviously takes practice. And one of the reasons I think this is such a problem is because it can lead us normal people who want to start painting these miniatures having unrealistically high expectations of just what we're going to be able to achieve even if we are following something step by step. And this is my point. We obviously watch all of these miniature painting tutorials to become a better painter. And don't get me wrong, they are invaluable as learning resources, but, and it's a big but, what we don't do is actually practice all of the stuff we learn. We don't sit there and do it repeatedly until we get better. We just watch the video and assume that we're gonna be able to do what they do in the video step by step. So really, what we need to do is actually practice these techniques. So it's for that reason that today I'm finally gonna practice painting miniature faces. I'm gonna paint a hundred of them, and by the end of it, hopefully I'll be slightly better. And along the way, I'll tell you what I learn, if I've improved, and we'll do a comparison at the end. But we do have one problem. So you may be wondering where I'm gonna get 100 miniature faces from. And if you saw my previous video, where we proxied an entire Dunlending force using Victrix miniatures, you'll know that these kits are great. You end up with so many spare heads. Take this sprue for example. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spare heads. There's another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 spare heads here. So we have so many head options. So my plan here here is to use 75 faces from this set. And then, right here we've got the Dunlending Wildman. There's 25 of them here. And to be honest, I did a very fast job with painting the faces. They look passable, but I think we can do a lot better and I can improve on these. So I'm gonna repaint all of these. And then that would be 100 faces, but as an extra challenge, we're gonna be painting the Heroes of Dunland. This is going to be the last three faces that I paint. And then after that we can compare if there's been any progress. 
So I started by cutting out all of the faces that I would be painting. And this is obviously the exciting sprue cutting montage of that. And then I counted up all the faces I had so far, hoping that I would actually have 100 miniature faces. Otherwise, this video would be a catastrophe. Almost as much as a catastrophe as the finances of this YouTube channel being negative. But that's what you get when you make a channel themed around Games Workshop tabletop miniatures. You know, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with all these miniature heads after, so I need some imagination in the comment section from you guys. I was thinking of maybe sending them out to people, but then I thought sending a severed head in the mail is isn't a good idea. I'm pretty sure there are laws preventing you from doing that. But then again, I'll do anything for subscribers. Now, instead of spray painting all of these gray faces, instead, I'm going to be using Bugman's Glow straight away. This was actually a mistake to do. It was a lot faster, but none of the paint actually gripped onto the texture of the plastic. So I really shouldn't have skipped that base coating stage at all. But either way, it eventually gets base coated. It took two thin coats to build up. I can literally hear Duncan smiling behind me. Next, Duncan uses Reichling Flesh Shade. Really though, any dark flesh colored wash will do. It instantly sinks into the recesses to create these shadows and bring out the texture of the face. And normally I'd call these faces done at this point, but Duncan is never done. So it is time to bring out the Cadian Flesh Tone paint or you can use any brighter flesh tone. And this is where things get hard because now I actually need to go over the specific raised parts of the skin, which requires hand-eye coordination. And on the initial faces, I actually realized that I wasn't thinning my paint enough, resulting in this rather textured surface. So next we grab an even lighter skin tone and go over the extreme highlights on the miniature. To be honest, I really sped through these first 75 practice faces, and I probably should have spent a bit more time on them actually practicing. But it was really the next step where everything fell apart. You see, I had to paint the eyes. Now Duncan paints the eyes black and then he puts two white dots on either side to create the illusion of a pupil. I tried to do this myself and it is so hard to just get the paint in the right place and to actually get it to come off your brush in a consistent flow is really difficult. But slowly I was getting better. I feel like I went from a 50% failure rate to about 25%. This really requires a very steady hand, a very thin brush, and just enough paint on that brush that's also thinned to the right consistency. So there's a lot of things that can go wrong with actually making the eyes look good. So at this point, I've done the first 75 test faces and they're looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with where things are right now. And I've kind of noticed a lot of the mistakes I'm making and how I'm gonna correct those in the next stage. So I moved on to repainting the Dunlending Wildman faces from Lord of the Rings. Repeating the same steps again, but having to repaint the hair along the way. Everything went pretty well, but once again, I really struggled with those eyes. But that said, there was definitely a large noticeable improvement. I'd highly recommend using gray for the pupils though, because otherwise it looks super intense, like ridiculously cartoony intense. So finally, this is the part I've been waiting for. We get on to the Dunlending heroes, the Forge World models that cost me an arm and a leg to buy. My whole YouTube channel hasn't even made up for buying these miniatures yet. But I applied what I'd learned so far in this practice session to painting the muscles and skin as well as the faces. And compared to rushing through everything else so far, I really took my time here. Like I actually spent a whole hour painting these free Dunlending Hero miniatures. I thinned the paints just right in order to build up the layers of brightness where the light hit the raised areas of muscles and the face. And I even added some scars onto the miniature to show the battle damage. And even the blood on the clenched hand of the Oathmaker Chieftain, which is from the part in the movie where he makes his oath to Saruman. And now I have one of the most dreaded parts of this painting process, which is the eyes. I was concerned about undoing all my hard work. So I did this off camera so I could actually properly get into the face of the miniature and they came out okay. I mean, the eyes are the focal point of the miniature. It's what makes it look lifelike. So if they look bad, it just ruins the entire thing. So 
After painting 100 miniature faces, what did I learn? Well, overall, I would say I definitely improved during this process. It highlighted some mistakes I was making, especially on the more detailed areas of the miniature. Ultimately, though, I feel like I sped through the initial test faces. Instead of truly taking my time to paint the best face I could a hundred times, I kind of just rushed through them to finish them. But then on these final three hero models, I felt like everything finally combined to come together in order to produce something I'm very happy with. I think if I had have painted those hero models first, they just wouldn't have looked that good. I can confirm that practice does definitely make perfect. But like anything, that takes time. And if you don't have time and you need to paint an entire miniature army, I would instead recommend you check out this video where I show you how to paint an army but make it look as good as possible. I'll see you there.